I really love the Westminster's Confessions, uh, the the first and the foremost uh, statement about about uh, our, our our primary goal in life is to glorify God and to enjoy God. I really love the fact that these two goes together. I'm from a background where church planting is the mission that drives us. You know, missionary church, church planting church. What is your vision? And it all sounds very lofty and uh, and uh, and uh, and high goal minded, pure and uh, and all this good stuff. Um, and it becomes inevitably very task oriented. My problem is that when people are driven, which is good, there is a reason to wake up in the morning. There's a reason to do what they're called to do. There's a reason that keep pumping it. That is called a vision. What, what is your vision as a church? We find it in the church website a lot and they continually they tell us what to do and, and sort of in, in a broad big picture tells us what is our goal. What is our goal? In, uh, in our mission, in our church, etc. However, that has to be precisely new ones, much more with, with glorify God and to enjoy God. All right. You know, when, uh, you know, when Jesus uh, gave that commandment, go and make, go, therefore go and make disciples of all nations and teach them to obey everything I have taught you and obey. And and, uh, and and teach them to obey everything I have taught you. There is a very important word at the beginning of this, and it's called therefore. Matthew eight, Matthew twenty eight eighteen to twenty. You know, it said Jesus said therefore. If you read the word therefore in the beginning of the sentence, you got to look at the verse before or verse or verses before that verse to find out what brought Jesus to say that therefore. There's a very important coherent uh, way of preaching. You know, co coherence is so important. If you write a paper or preach a sermon, being coherent is, is everything. You can never be compelling without presenting a coherent uh, argument, logic. How did you get there in the first place? Jesus got there by saying that before the, the verses before he said that, therefore, before he said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, he said, only all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Has been given to me. All authority in heaven and on earth. It has been given to, to him. And therefore go and make disciples of all nations. You see, the therefore go and make disciples of all nations happens only after Jesus said, "All authority has been given to me on earth, as in he as, and, and on earth as in he and and in heaven." Now, that all authority has been given to Jesus on earth and in heaven comes after Jesus has resurrected from his dead. That's why it's all about the redemption of God. It's a redemptive narrative, redemptive historical. Of God again, of Christ. This everything points back to the cross. The, the only reason Jesus asked us to go and make disciples of all nations is because of the cross, because of his resurrection from the dead, because he defeated the devil. He defeated death. Therefore, he said, Go and make disciples. You know, author, all authority was not with Jesus before he resurrected from the dead, before he died. Now, after he died and resurrected, all authority has been given to him. He earned it. Seriously, he earned it. With that, it's just going to be amazing. Nothing is going to stop Jesus now. Absolutely nothing. He's going to romp. He's going to, he's going to, <coughs> he's going to rock it all the way through now until he comes back again. The second coming of Christ. So people have to understand that. So what do I say all this for? I say all this for because that is precisely the reason a church planting movement must learn how to enjoy God, to love God first before you go in a, a visionary task oriented, make disciples of all nations. Jesus did not say, go and make disciples of all nations uh, first. First, he died first, he resurrected. And then his authority has been given to me and therefore go, I'm setting you up now.
you got it. I'm with you. I got everything in my hands now. I want it. You know, I, I'm, I'm setting you out. The devil may fight. The enemy may fight you. Fine, but they will never beat you because I have won the battle. I got everything. Just go. But now even the victory, even authority itself, it's, it's nice, it's a, it's a triumphant note, but that is not enough because, because that doesn't work on the, on, on the operation of just uh, one aspect of it, which is, which is what we call the triumphant note, because we will also want to have the, uh, the enjoyment note. We want the uh, intimacy note. You see, that's why, what it's called. You go to read scriptures in context, you to harmonize it. You see, Jesus, all the time, he's saying, I've come to do, to do the will of my Father in heaven. <coughs> I have not come to do my own will. I've always come to do my Father's will. It's all about <coughs> and doing my Father's will. He said that a lot. And he said, my Father and I are one. <laughs> and he said that I, I, I have shown my love to the world, to you, and so, <coughs> and so that you will know that I love my Father, and the Father loves me. You see the intimate love relationship going on? That is what you call glorify God, love God, and enjoy God. <coughs> Jesus can go out and in the evening and pray and talk to the Father all night. That's what happened before, <coughs> before he... Uh, appointed the 12 disciples, right? He, he spent time talking to the Father. He obviously enjoyed the Father. I really think that to really pray effectively and to serve God effectively, it cannot just be a one-dimensional vision driving. It has to be multi, <coughs> multi-visional, multi, uh, multi, multi-dimensional. Uh, you know, it cannot be uh, a diminished level. It cannot be a reductionistic level model. It has to be rich. It has to be you love God and you enjoy God. That's what I fully believe. When Jesus said to his disciples that, uh, <clears throat> my will, my food is to do the will of the Father. He seriously means that because he so loves the Father and enjoys the Father. For us as Christians, that's why the catechism number one is to glorify God and to enjoy God seriously really means a lot to me because I want to enjoy God, man. I don't want just to be like a slave, act like a slave laborer to, to, to God, you know, to Jesus. You know, because he, that's not what he wants. He wants a relational Enjoy. It's like you love somebody, you, and then you serve the somebody with willing heart, with, with more than gladness, because you love the somebody. And the, re, the that's right. The relational part of the Great Commission is missing a lot of church planting movements, okay, or any church that emphasize on that. So we really have to combine these two, combine the love God and enjoy God. And then you go and make disciples of a nation. Then, and then you do the will of God. You can impossible to do the will of God <coughs> without loving God and being loved by Him and, and enjoying God. Amen. The Lord bless you.